Return on equity, or ROE, is one of the most important metrics for evaluating a company's performance, and we can learn more about ROE by breaking it into its component parts. ROE is the product of a company's profit margin, its asset turnover, and its equity multiplier, which is a measure of leverage. So let's dig into this more. Profit margin and asset turnover are essentially evaluating a company's business performance, its operating performance. How good a job is this company doing with its business operations? Okay, when we think about profit margin, managing expenses, when we think about asset turnover, how good a job is the company doing using its assets to, to ring out some sales, to generate sales from those assets? Okay, so these have to do with the company's business performance. Whereas when we look at the equity multiplier, this is a measure really of leverage and thus the company's financing decisions, okay? So we've got three components here of ROE. One has to do with financing choices made by the firm and the other two have to do with the company's operations. So a company can increase its ROE by improving its profit margin, which you can do by get, you know, doing a better job managing its expenses, or finding a way to generate more sales from its assets, or not improving operations at all, but taking on more leverage. Now, this leverage, okay, so this leverage is a two-sided sword. So when times are good, when times are good, a company can do great by adding more leverage, by increasing the leverage. So just think about it like this. If times are going great and the company's doing really well and we're like, hey, you know, we can make a profit. If you give us money, we can make a 10% return on any money you give us and we can just borrow at 3%, okay? Then we've got a spread here of seven percentage points. So it would be advantageous to say, well, let's borrow more money at 3% if we can make 10% return. But here's the downside of adding more leverage. When times are bad, it makes bad times worse. That's because this interest has to be paid whether the company is profitable or not. Okay, so leverage is, is a tricky thing. It makes good times better and bad times worse. So yes, a company can increase its ROE by increasing its leverage, but that's assuming this company is profitable. If the company is losing money, the last thing it wants to do is, is take on more leverage. Okay. So let's dig into this. We're going to get some, uh, I'll go through some actual examples. We will compare actual data for UPS and FedEx, okay, two companies that are obviously competing with one another in the delivery uh, business. Now, I've got data here for 2018 to 2020 for each company, but bear in mind FedEx, uh, th so this is, we've got annual data here and their fiscal year ends on May 31st, whereas UPS, their fiscal year ends on December 31st. So this isn't exactly an apples to apples comparison, but I thought these would be two cool companies to compare. So let's dig into it. So if we just look at the ROE for each of these companies, we can see that UPS is clearly higher. Okay, it's clearly higher than the ROE for FedEx. As a matter of fact, uh, UPS, at least in 2018, had an astronomical ROE. And I've, I've actually been seeing more of this for, with companies as I look at the ROE because a lot of companies have had uh, share buybacks in the, last, in the last few years and treasury stock decreases their stockholders' equity, which lead to them having a really small amount of stockholders equity and so there's basically a small amount of equity in the denominator for calculating roe so but i don't want to get into that too much in detail here i want to focus on comparing these two companies and, and what we can learn now first thing notice a trend roe has declined okay from 2018 to 2020 for each of these companies okay ups it's, it's steadily declined from 236 to 68 percent and for fedex um, it declined in 20, it went up a little bit more in 2020 from what it was in 2019, but it's, it's a lot lower than it was in 2018. Okay, 25.8% to 7.1%. So both of them from 2018 to 2020, ROE declined. That's not a good thing for shareholders, right? They're not going to, so the question is why? Why did ROE decline? Well, we know that ROE is the product of this times this times this, okay? We've got profit margin. Our operating efficiency, how well are we managing expenses, asset turnover, how well, are we, how good a job are we doing generating sales, and then our measure of leverage. So let's look at what changed. So for UPS, we look at profit margin. Okay, profit margin went down considerably in 2020 fiscal year. Okay, FedEx, we've, we've actually got from 2018 to 2020 also a significant decline 
in profit margins. So that's not good. So for each company, and we could dig in to their income statement and say, okay, well, why did the profit margin decline so much? Like, what happened? Were there, did they take like some kind of impairment or what? You know, was it some, you know, increase in like fuel costs or whatever? We could dig into that more, but it's helpful to just know at a high level, okay, profit margin uh, is lower than it was a couple of years before for each of these companies. Now, when we look at, let's go back now, we'll take a look at asset turnover, how good a job are they using, doing using their assets to generate sales. We see uh, UPS, not much of a change since 2018. I mean, it's, it's lower. That's not good, but it, it hasn't, you know. Now, when we take a look at FedEx, it's, it's also decreased. Looks like a little bit more of a decrease. Uh, for FedEx. So both of them from 28, 2018 to 2020, there's been a decline in asset turnover, but it doesn't seem like that's the main reason that ROE has, has declined from 2018 to 2020. It looks like the the drop in pop profit margin was more significant than, than the decline in the asset turnover. Okay, Asset turnover did not fall by that much. Now, you see the equity multiplier leverage. Okay, So that's a little bit higher from 2018 to 2020. Okay, and from 2018 to 2020, also for FedEx. So in each of the cases, uh, we see that the, the companies uh, became more leveraged. Now, remember, just because they became more leveraged does not mean that the company went out and borrowed more money. It doesn't mean that this company went out and you know issued a bunch of debt. It could be that their equity decreased, right? It could be their stockholders' equity decreased. And, and so then the balance... Of, of debt versus equity is going to tilt more toward debt with assets being financed more by debt if the company is if its equity is reduced all else equal or if it, it takes on more debt all else equal either way the company's going to end up more leveraged okay more of the assets are being financed by debt versus versus equity so i my key takeaway from this is okay these trends are not good for for either of these companies this is not not good trends Okay, in terms of when we think about the operating performance, let's leave aside financing decisions here and look at operating performance is not going well uh, in terms of the trend. Okay, uh, neither the company lost money or anything like during this time period. So it's not like, oh, they're in trouble. They're going to go bankrupt or something during this time period. There's no issues like that, but it was a disturbing trend. But the most disturbing thing in terms of why the ROE drop considerably for each company from 2018 to 2020 would be that decrease in profit margin. The profit margin from 2018 to 2020 for both companies was significantly lower than what it had been uh, a couple years before. So you'd want to dig in. And now because both of them experience these same things, you might say, well, maybe it's an industry-wide shock, something to happen and so forth. So you could dig into their financials more, but now you know where to look. You want to focus on that decline in profit margin.